Hi there, friends. Back on the road here with the Pre-Ride Show, presented by FSA. We're in the FSA booth here at Unbound. I'm with my new friends, Chris and Brittany. Hi, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you? We're really good. Appreciate you guys taking a few minutes uh, to spend some time with us. Um, and we want, we're here today to talk about the Untamed Cycling Academy that you guys started out of Boulder, right? Boulder, Colorado. Yep. All right. Um, in general, what's it all about and what are you guys doing out there? So we are a new elite level cycling team. We started this year um, during COVID, which was definitely challenging um, with a mission to promote equality in cycling specifically and increase women appearance in the sport of cycling. Okay. Chris, I know you have uh, some background in triathlon as well. Is that where you got the bug for the cycling piece? So, yeah, I, I've spent the last last five years I was racing triathlon professionally and I had kind of gotten to the point in that where my career and just the trajectory I was on just wasn't quite where I wanted. And in the beginning of 2020, I kind of um, finished my triathlon career by, you know, just checking the box and doing a full Ironman just to see. And I just kind of felt done with the sport. And then with COVID happening in the pandemic, it kind of gave me this beautiful opportunity to race gravel events that were happening with no real like consequence or lap for my current sponsor. So I was able to kind of introduce brands I was already working with, with the gravel industry and kind of what this movement was. And then just with the big kind of shakedown of the cycling industry as a whole, we were kind of just able to capitalize on that with building this team, with taking, you know, past existing sponsors, but also having a lot of current brands that we work with now step in to kind of be a part of this. Um, and I want to say, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for COVID. Kind of the, the big shakedown that led to this, just it kind of showed all these brands that sponsor athletes. It kind of let them, I don't want to say like, a lot of athletes really had to justify their worth outside of racing. Sure. And that's where we kind of excelled is showing like, all right, you know, using our YouTube channel, using our media to show the value outside of events. And that kind of paid dividends when we were looking for new brands to start this project, because we kind of already were able to like point and say, hey, look at the things we're doing outside of racing, like any investment in us is going to be guaranteed regardless of results. I think that was a really important concept. And that's a unique uh, element of, of the team, I, I, I gather, because it's, it's not so much prevalent in other in other teams and how they run their organizations. Yeah, we want people to be like, this year just isn't the year for us to be focusing on results because we don't want, we want this team to be an elite team and we want to kind of like shake up what a domestic elite team is in the United States. But we just found that our basis needs to be something other than that. So our base needs to be our media and our show, The Equal Ride, and really having that and then build from that results by signing athletes next year that are very competitive and then going to races, which also like our schedule next year, we really want to take what elite racing is in the United States, which is road and gravel now. Like the reality is that gravel races have a bigger impact on the road calendar and the media overall than road events do. Take, I mean, with the Tour of Utah gone this year, Unbound is the biggest cycling event in North America in terms of media. So it's just kind of taking it to what it is. I mean, the reality is that like Redlands and Gila have their place. I mean, not just in the calendar, but you know, the history of cycling in North America. So like those events we like want to attend with the team just as much as we want to attend the gravel events and kind of find this new balance of what a calendar will look like for an elite team. Right. Brittany, you mentioned uh, bringing more women into the sport. You guys are based in Boulder. That's as, as uh, hot and vibrant of a cycling community as there is in this country. Are all of your riders based out of Boulder or are you pulling from all across the country? Um, so right now it's just us two on the team. Um, but what we're doing really is this summer hosting women's rides because I mean, what I found specifically is there's a lot of women in cycling already, but not a lot of them are doing gravel. Um, like all my friends, I'm like, hey, let's go for a gravel ride. And they're like, eh, I don't know, like kind of scared. Like I only have a road bike. I'm like, we have like fire roads. Like you can ride yeah, yeah. this with your road bike. Yeah. Like it's fine. Like so really just like kind of making a community where ladies feel comfortable to try something new and they don't feel like they have to be going so fast and feel like they're being judged and, you know. Or, or not allowed to play, you know. Yeah, I've exactly. always found in talking to the women we have, it seems like there's this, this wall that exists where they don't feel comfortable in order even to ask basic questions and certainly no one was offering that information. So you give them a safe place to be able to come and enjoy and experience it without any of that pressure or stress. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, let's talk about the race. How do we feel? Which, uh, which distance are you doing? I'm doing the two, or the 100. He's doing the 200. Okay. Are we prepped and trained and ready? We feeling good? Me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I had to take, um, most, I'm um, actually all the fall off and most of the winter. Um, it was pretty sick to just figuring out health problems and I'm a full-time teacher working 100% in person this year. So the added stress of doing that during COVID and being working in person was just like not lending itself to a very strict training training regimen. I get the sense you're going to handle it all right. I think you're <laughs> yeah. going to do okay. And Chris, you've got the 200 plan. Yeah, I'm signed up for the 200. I am terrified of what this race is and more terrified of what it could be if things just start popping off in the wrong direction. So, and it's a lot. I mean, people don't realize that this race is fielding, you know, a world-class field. I mean, we have rep strong representation from the world tour, but we also have a long, a big representation of people that were in the world tour. Yeah. And then on top of that, we have almost like mature gravel professionals, like take Colin Strick, for example, where I feel like every year he just kind of even more matures as just setting himself as a professional gravel cyclist and really establishing that as his niche. And then you have like Payson McAlvin, so many of these just amazing pioneer athletes yeah. that are racing that just make it even more competitive. And I think that we're going to have a nuts race. And I'm kind of going into this mindset of like, from everything I've ever understood of performance is that curiosity is the best mindset for performance. So I like to, whenever I think about this, I'm like, I'm trying to think of it more like, I'm really curious how hard I can go, how long I can stay with the front guys, how long can I, you know, be in play with the top world tour guys. And because this race is such a big deal in the world now, it's almost, a, Colin always emphasized this last year by getting a world tour offer after this performance that this race, and I think a lot of American road cyclists need to learn that media is how people find you. If you win your local whatever, no one's going to know you won without being shown it. So this race really, I think for a lot of people, they might not know it is a good performance here. It can set up a lot of different options outside of gravel. You know, if I perform well, you know, it could open up doors for performance on the world tour on road or, you know, being picked for like a national team spot at Worlds. There's so many options just because of the eyeballs on this event. So it's just, you know, it's a lot goes in your head, but there's a lot on the line, but. Well, it seems like you guys are doing it right in terms of that. Where can folks go to find out more about you guys? So if you want to go, YouTube is the best option. So if you just type in Untamed Cycling Academy on YouTube, you're going to come up with our channel. And then we have a show there called The Equal Ride, which is um, an eight episode series that we're doing this year, showing the start of this team and kind of the progression and an honest look at the highs and lows around it. Um, we're currently have three episodes out. We're filming one of them this weekend. If people got a chance to go check out that channel, it'd be a massive help for the team. Okay. Uh, just kind of growing it. And that's the future of this team is that channel. So okay. we have a lot riding on it. Brittany, where are we going to see you guys later on in the in the season here? What other events you guys got on the calendar? Um, our next like really big event is the Rift in Iceland. Nice. Um, Chris is going to do BWR. Um, Good. I didn't get signed up in time, so we got room for you. Don't worry. Yeah, maybe I'll I get know a spot some people for BWR. Over there. I can help you out. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing Kusher and the Tusher. Okay. Um, Lauf is our bike sponsor, so they're a big sponsor of that race. Yeah. And then, I don't know, October is like... October's nuts. It is. There's it is like, like more races than there are weekends in October, yes. so we're still working on figuring out. But we'll be at like Big Sugar, Barrier Bay. I might do Tour of Gila. Um, I might do Tour of Gila if I can find like friends. I don't want to go do it by myself as a solo guy, so I'm like, all right, I might make some friends and do that race, but we'll definitely be at Barrier Bay and Big Sugar and uh, the Belgian Waffle Rides in October, which I think is Lawrence. It is. Yeah. So we'll be looking forward to doing all those events. We'll see how we come away from this one, how mentally scarred I might be, but you never know. She'll be fine. She's doing the hundred. She's like, I'm I don't. Not, I'm not worried about either of you guys. I'm worried about do great. me. I'm worried about me a lot on this one. I'm not worried about her. She's a hundred. That's like, it's like, oh, a little. It's adorable. It's You're only doing the hundred. Training ride. That's yeah. a training ride. Yeah. I come from Ironman background too, so I raced lots of Ironmans before I got into gravel cycling. So. But I would much rather do an Ironman. Ironman is phenomenally easy. People don't understand, like, it's easy to walk a marathon. You can blow up to Smithereens and walk a marathon, yeah. no problem. High five and people You can way. blow up on a bike on gravel roads. You still have to pedal the bike. You still have to balance the bike. You still have to go over the gravel. And it's Kansas, so you're also going to have to fight the wind. You still, 
always have to do those things. You can't just get off and walk. Uh, you guys are going to do just fine. You're tuned and ready, and you got FSA behind you, we got so that, FSA that's not a bad behind thing at us. all. We got the mechanics on standby here, yep. which has been awesome. Like to just be able to like come over here. Like we had some changes we wanted to make made, and have them just be able to like get it done perfectly it was a big help. Yeah. We could not be like more grateful for the support FSA has given us. Well, us too here at Pure Gravel. Yeah. They've been our, our sponsor all week long. We're super grateful for them and going to be cheering you guys on tomorrow. You guys are going to do great. And looking forward to keeping up, watching this development of this great program that you got going here. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Right on. Chris yeah, and much. Brittany from the Untamed Cycling Academy. Another episode of the Pre-Ride Show presented by FSA. Make sure to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel and also the little bell so you get notifications of all the other episodes that are going to be dropping throughout the rest of the weekend. Thanks for tuning in.